In this video, I'm going to use the raising operator to express any energy eigenstate of the quantum harmonic oscillator in terms of the ground state. First, I'm going to write down a very important relationship that tells us what the raising operator does to an energy eigenstate. We've seen this relationship in earlier videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. So A dagger is the raising operator. It is one of the two ladder operators. It is the Hermitian conjugate of A. It's also known as the Hermitian adjoint. And that's why we write a dagger in the top right corner. So this is acting on one of the energy eigenstates. And I'm writing over here Dirac notation. This is a ket. So it's a ket in Dirac notation. And it is labeled by lowercase n. And this lowercase n is one of the eigenvalues of the number operator. And n is a non-negative integer. So it can be 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So n is only allowed to be a non-negative integer. And this relationship, and all the relationships I'm going to write over here, hold for any value of n, any of those allowed values of n. So this is equal to square root of n plus 1 times another ket. And this ket is labeled by n plus 1. So the difference between these two kets is that here we have n and here we have n plus 1. This is the raising operator. It has raised this eigenvalue by 1. So we've gone from n to n plus 1. We've gone up one energy quantum. And that is why we're dealing with quantum mechanics. Some quantities are discrete. So this relationship is going to be my starting point for this video. First, what I want to do is I want to write this entire relationship in terms of the raised ket. So I want to uh, divide both sides by the normalization coefficient. And if you're worried about this normalization coefficient, there's another video in the quantum mechanics playlist where I derive this value of square root of n plus 1. So over here, I'm going to write n plus 1 on the left-hand side. So this is going to be an equation in terms of this ket, n plus 1. And what's going to be on the right-hand side? Well, over here, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to divide by this normalization coefficient. So I'm going to have a dagger divided by the square root of n plus 1. And all of this is acting on the ket labeled by lowercase n. So this is just the same relationship, but I've written it in a more suggestive form. We're going to use this relationship to construct the general relationship that I want to prove in this video. So have a look at this. This works for any allowed value of n. So we can choose to relabel all of these n's inside here. We can call this n plus 1 the new version of n. So I'll write that down over here. So I'll write on the left hand side, I'm going to write the ket labeled by n. And that means on the right hand side, we're still going to have a dagger, the raising operator. But inside over here, we're going to have square root of n because the number that is inside this ket has to be the same number that is in this square root that we're dividing by. But are we still going to have n over here? No, we're not. We're going to have n minus 1. That is what's going to be inside this ket over here. So we have n minus 1 inside this ket. So I've written n, this eigenstate labeled by n, in terms of n minus 1. So the raising operator has to be applied to one state below the, the energy level that we want. And we know that this works for n. It also works for n minus 1. It works for any allowed value of n. So I can do the same trick. I can replace this ket over here with an expression that is analogous to this expression. So we'll do that uh, in the next line over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this equal to, I'm still going to have a dagger over the square root of n. But now I want to replace this ket with a relationship that is analogous to this one. So what is going to go over here? Well, I'm going to need another a dagger. So that's going to be a dagger over here. But what am I dividing by? Inside over here, I have n minus 1. So I'm going to have to divide by the square root of n minus 1. So that's what I'm going to have over here. And then I'm going to be acting on n minus 2. So this is the eigenstate labeled by n minus 2. So can you see what I've done here? All I've done is I've taken this relationship, I've rewritten it, so that n is over here, and we have n minus 1 over here. And then I've taken this ket, 
and I've rewritten it as all of this combination. So this combination is equivalent to this cat. And what have we had to do? We've had to apply the raising operator twice to this n minus 2 cat. And that's given us n. And we've also had to ensure that normalization is preserved, and that's why we're dividing by these square roots in the bottom. So I can write this in a more condensed form. In the top, I can write this as a dagger squared. And in the denominator, I'm going to bring all these square roots together. I'm going to have n times n minus 1. And all of this is underneath the square root. So I've just brought these two normalization coefficients into a single normalization coefficient. And over here, we have the ket n minus 2. Now, you might see a pattern starting to emerge. But I'm going to make this even more suggestive. I'm going to make this an explicit pattern. We're going to do this one more time. We're going to go down to n minus 3. So re let's replace this ket in the same way that we replaced the ket that is labeled by n minus 1. And I'll do that in the line below. So here's what we're going to get. We're still going to have this over here. So I'm going to rewrite that. That is still going to be here out the front. But I'm going to write it in a more explicit way. I'm going to write it in this form over here. So I'm going to have a dagger over square root of n. Then I'm going to have square root of n minus 1 downstairs in the denominator. And there's going to, still going to be an a dagger. But what I want to do is I want to replace this n minus 2 with an n minus 3. But if I go down one, I have to include another raising operator. So I'm going to have the square root of n minus 2 in the denominator. That's going to be over here. And in the numerator, I'm going to have a dagger. So it's going to be three a daggers. And they're all going to be acting on n minus 3. That is the eigenstate labeled by n minus 3. So all I've done over here is I still have these two guys over here. So they are just being carried over. And this ket I have replaced with this combination over here. So we have n minus 2 inside here. And that same n minus 2 is inside this normalization factor. And what can we do over here? Well, we can see there are three raising operators. So I can write that in the condensed form that is analogous to this form over here. In the bottom, I'm going to have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 as all in the square root. That's in the denominator. And over here, I'm going to have a dagger cubed. And all of this is going to be acting on n minus 3. Now, we could keep on going. But I think you're starting to see the pattern that is emerging over here. So I'm just going to write the most general uh, pattern that we can get. So if we keep on doing this, eventually, we're going to get to the ground state. So n is bounded from below. The smallest value that n can have is 0. It cannot go any further uh, down. It cannot be negative. It is a non-negative integer. So if we keep uh, using this substitution trick, and we keep going all the way down to n equals 0, eventually, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get this form over here. So I'll write that underneath. We're going to have, as, as this normalization coefficient, we're going to have the square root of n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way n minus 3, n minus 4, all the way, so I'll write some, all th some dots over here, times 2 times 1. And that's all going to be inside the square root. And what's going to be up, up here? Well, we're going to we're gonna have to apply the raising operator n times. So there's going to be n copies of this as we get down to the ground state. And we're going to be applying this to the ground state over here. There is a far more condensed way to write all the stuff that is underneath the square root. This is the same as n factorial. So I'll write that over here. What we have is the raising operator applied n times divided by the square root of n factorial. And that is all being applied to the ground state. So this is the ground state of the quantum harmonic oscillator. And it is labeled by n equals 0. So to go from some arbitrary state n down to the ground state, we have to apply the raising operator n times to the ground state if we want to hop up from n equals 0 up to here. So that is what we're doing. We're, we're essentially, we know how far we are above the ground state. That is what n is telling us. And this n over here is telling us how many jumps we have to go from the ground state. And to ensure normalization is preserved, we have to have 
the square root of n factorial down here. And we know where this factor comes from. It comes from this pattern that we have observed. So what is the general relationship? Well, the general relationship, or right below, the general relationship tells us that any energy eigenstate labeled by n, which is a non-negative integer, can be expressed as n times the raising operator applied to the ground state, all divided by this square root of n factorial. So this is just a normalization factor, and this is the raising operator being applied n times to this ground state. Now, let's see if this works for specific cases. Let's choose some values of n. Over here, we've actually uh, tried this for the general case, right? So this is the most general possible case. But if we set n equal to 1, what is this side going to be? If n is equal to 1 over here, this n factorial is also going to be equal to 1, right? 1 factorial is equal to 1. So we don't have to worry about this normalization coefficient. And we're only going to be applying the raising operator once. And that fits with the picture, right? So if we have, I'll write this over here, if we set n equal to 1, then we're just going to have 1 inside this cat over here. And that's going to be equal to the raising operator being applied once. So we just apply the raising operator once. And that fits with this equation up here. If we apply the raising operator to the ground state, that is just going to give us 0 plus 1 over here and 0 plus 1 over here. So the square root of 1 out here, that's just equal to 1. And inside here, we're going to have 1. So that is exactly what we have in this relationship. But over here, we've just flipped the equation. Right? This right-hand side would be on the left-hand side over here. Let's try for the ket labeled by 2. So let's say we have 2 over here. Well, then we would have to apply this operator twice. So what would we have? We would have a dagger being applied twice to the ground state. And what would we have to divide by? We would have to divide by the square root of 2 factorial. And 2 factorial, that is equal to 2. I'll do one more example. So let's do the example where we have n equal to 3. For n equal to 3, we have to apply the raising operator three times to the ground state. And then we have to divide by 3 factorial. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. So we divide by 6. Or we could, in general, write that as 3 factorial. So that is the type of relationship that we would also see over here. If we tried setting n equal to 2 over here, if we put 2 inside here, then we would get root 3 over here, and we would have 3 over here. So there would be a 3 inside this cat, which is what we see over here, and then we would see a root 3 inside here. And that, would, that is what you would see is if you had a 2 over here. And then if you replace that 2 with another equivalent cat that has a label of 1, so if you do this recursively, you would eventually get to this. So this relationship is all you need to derive the general relationship. And you can see that the general relationship gives you these specific cases. And these specific cases are consistent with what you'd expect to see uh, it with this relationship. And we're going to be using this in the later videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. How are we going to use it? Well, if we know the ground state wave function, then we can find every other wave function. So all of the excited states we can find from the ground state wave function. And that is why this relationship in black is very important. So we're going to be using that in later videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. Make sure you watch those videos. You can find them if you click over here.